All right, so today's the day I reveal the man behind the camera. Um, I've got my COVID caveman haircut and beard going because everything's been closed. But anyway, so let's do a, a little bit of an electrical overview for the Sling TSI and the Rotex 915 and kind of the interface of it. There's another video that um, Matt from Airplane Factory put out and I'll link that in the description here. Um, he goes into a little bit more detail about how each system works that I'm going to, I'm going to be more specifically talking about kind of the wiring of the plane itself. So anyway, so you've got here the kind of the firewall and the, the firewall sub panel rim here. And I tried to place everything, you know, close enough to where it is on the actual firewall, um, but give myself some space because obviously the engine here is not so small and things like that. So anyway, um, basically the heart of the entire system, of course, is the engine and specifically the uh, two generators inside. I think they're actually alternators, but uh, Rotax calls them generators. So anyway, generator one is 16 amps and generator two is 28 amps. And they actually um, work independently of each other to power generator one, goes to regulator A on the fuse box to power the engine and its systems and generator two goes to regulator B on the fuse box to provide electrical power for the airframe. Um, basically the way this works is now that the fuse box is regulating everything, it's able to send the power from regulator A to the ECU to power the, the uh, engine management. And so these I'm gonna go through my little firewall hole here, and then they go up to the ECU. And from that, now the ECU has power from generator A and potentially generator B in order to power the systems. So, um, you know, it'll, I'll draw it here. It connects to the fuel pumps, it connects to the spark plugs, it connects to um, your fuel injectors and everything from there. And the ECU here with lane A and lane B is what regulates uh, the power distribution for the engine. Um, a couple of interesting things is... What's up, man? All right, sorry, so somebody stopped by the shop. I had to uh, continue this as part two here. So anyway, what I was talking about before, what I was gonna say is the ECU lane A and B are actually not really related to fuse box um, regulators A and B. Um, they're totally different. So essentially what happens in the ECU is there's two lanes of data processing to control everything from the spark plugs, the injectors, the fuel pumps, and um, all of that um, with the two separate lanes. And so the ECU will seamlessly switch inside without you ever knowing um, which lane is controlling everything based on whatever's running smoother or, or whatever its algorithm is. Um, the only time you really get to have any control over what's happening there is when during runoff, when you switch off A or switch off B, it'll run just one set of spark plugs, one set of injectors, um, et cetera. And so that's, you know, your runoff to check your systems and obviously kind of like your mag check. Um, so outside of that, um, it'll do all the switching for you. It might always be running on lane B, you would never know. It's just, I guess it's just that smart. So anyway, um, from here, your battery connects to your avionics through your amateur shunt. So your shunt is basically just a reference point for um, essentially your GEA24, Let's see, I guess I'll just draw it up here. Your GEA24, if you have Garmin avionics, and um, it's kind of analyzing all your, your engine data for you. And so your GEA24 is gonna be doing all your, you know, it's it's taking all the readings of your cylinder cylinder head temperatures, your manifold pressure, all of that stuff is, is interpreted through this box here. One of those things being current draw by your avionic system. Um, so all of the power needs to run through this before it goes to the, the airframe for your avionics. 
And so you've got your high pin and your low pin here on GA24, and it's gonna measure the current draw. Um, I'm using a VPX on my system instead of um, circuit breakers. And so that also will give you another level of, you know, kind of a breakdown of individual components and their current draws. So anyway, um, from the GEA24, you will run a power line down here to your master solenoid. Um, I've seen on Airplane Factory's electrical diagrams, it uses a, a circuit breaker switch. I guess you can use that, but um, this is what I've seen um, everybody else doing, and it kind of makes more sense. And so once again, through my firewall hole, back in my avionics land over here. And the master solenoid is controlled by your master switch, which is just a ground wire that goes to your master switch. Um, from there, your master switch completes the ground, the, uh, the circuit to ground, and the master solenoid is activated. And for me, this goes to my VPX. Um, for other systems, it can go to your main bus where your breakers are. Okay, so from here, another line directly off the battery is to your starter solenoid. Um, this is your big four gauge wire and it goes from your starter solenoid down here to your starter motor on the motor, on the engine. Uh, from here, the starter solenoid is controlled, once again, it's, it's all kind of bundled in with these um, A and B. They're labeled A and B, but they go to X1 and X2 on the fuse box. And it's all kind of bundled in with those wires. The ECU is controlling it. From here, you've got your HIT A and your HIT B, harness interface connectors, HIC. And on HIT B, you just um, connect two of the pins and that creates the loop to uh, activate your starter solenoid. Now, something to take note of here is that your starter solenoid needs to be isolated from your firewall. So it cannot have ground connected to your firewall. It needs to be separate. So it gets its ground over here from um, regulator A. Um, same thing with regulator A. Regulator A, starter solenoid, kind of all the engine systems are not grounded to the firewall except for during startup. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. So regulator B, however, does have a ground wire. I'm gonna go all the way over here with it. Somewhere right there. And that's grounded to the firewall. So then you can test the system to make sure you haven't made any mistakes by, um, with your own meter, checking continuity between A and B, there should be none. Um, your battery also is grounded to your firewall, and so is your engine, whatever. So is your engine. So this is getting a little bit complicated, but I will show it on the plane here in a minute once I get through this whole thing. And um, so yeah. Oops. So, let's see. So right, so from all of your grounds here, I chose to use one of the, I'm only using one GPS mount on, in, on the firewall here, and I'm gonna use the further one to the right. Uh, I just drilled out one of the holes to allow a nice big ground lug, and then also it's got the hole right there. And so then I am also gonna run my avionics ground bus wire to that same big ground stud terminal. Um, okay, so back to the, the shunt here. The, um, the shunt also off of this, you will wire your, right. You're gonna have power right here. And this is gonna be your ECU backup switch. And that goes to pin one. And so this is only in the event of everything failing pretty much. So essentially what you've got here is you've got generator one that provides power for the engine, generator two for the airframe. However, on the event of failure of generator one, you have generator two and in the fuse box, it's actually wired so that it'll seamlessly um, power the airframe through generator two and it'll give you an enunciator light in your panel to show you that there's a problem, but the engine will continue to run and you'll be safe to um, land and continue flying until you can land. 
So basically in the event of failure of generator one, you've got generator two and it'll do that for you. Um, in the event of both failures, then you have this ECU backup switch. So and that will allow the engine EMS backup, I guess, the engine man management system to continue to run on battery power. And I think you've got like 30 minutes of, of engine time you got to lift. Um, and so that's going to go to pin one on the X3 connector. So the X3 connector is kind of the only connector on the fuse box that you have to wire up yourself. There's only three wires. It's not a big deal. Um, so pin one on, on the X3 connector is your ECU backup. Pin two is it supplies power to the airframe during startup. So that's another wire that's going to come off of here. And this is going to power your engine during startup because of course your generators aren't running yet. And so when you, when you push the start button, it co completes a loop to power your, your engine systems while you're starting the engine. Once the engine starts and you stop, you know, cranking the engine over, that system is closed off and you don't have to do it anymore. Same thing, um, oh, pin three on the X3 connector is the last thing that goes to the shut. Pin three is the generator output. So that's pin three of the X3 connector is the output of the 28 amp generator two. And so I think that that's pretty much the overview of kind of the basics of the system here. Um, like I said, the video of Matt from Airplane Factory kind of breaks down a little bit more of what's happening with the um, the system itself and kind of failures and, and things like that that can happen. But I'm just trying to, to uh, get through simply the wiring of it um, because I don't think that there's a whole lot of information on, on how the, the system is wired through the manuals. <laughs> One last wire I did forget to mention is regulator A also gets grounded to the airframe on the startup. So I guess I'll run that through this imaginary hole here. And this would go to um, your startup button as well. So this wire pin two on the X3 connector, um, the regulator A ground, and of course the, the HIC B connector pins all get closed during startup and that's what allows the engine to crank the EMS to have power during that and it allows a more robust kind of grounding system for the EMS while it's running since it is getting power from the, um, the battery here during startup um, it needs to get grounded the same way as well so I think that that's an overview here of, of the engine and um, let's see it on the plane look at the systems on the plane here um, obviously my little blue box right here the engine um, inside of here is the two generators uh, you can't see them they're internal to the engine um, so essentially you have your fuse box a and fuse box b connectors here this is what i was talking about x1 and x2 on the two connectors um, here's what i was looking at for regulator a or sorry regulator a and regulator b and the ECU and from there basically it's all just like I said so generator one is going to power um, regulator A generator two regulator B um, regulator B is grounded to the airframe regulator A is not um, so essentially here's the system um, like I was saying, the battery four gauge wire goes down to your starter solenoid and from the starter solenoid in there to the starter. Um, I chose, so it's also the Rotax cables come with the little pin here. Let's see if I can get a better look. The little pin here, come on, focus as well as a ground wire. Oh, you'll just have to trust me. The ground wire connects to the mounting screw, right? Because it just needs to be grounded to the starter solenoid only. So that took me a little while to find that information. 
Um, I chose to pull my, my main power off of this connection here. So rather than running a second wire off the main battery lug over to my amateur shunt, I just pulled it off of here, um, right here. And so for me, it was able to kind of like keep the wiring a little bit cleaner rather than running along the top and then down because there's this cover here. I just chose to do it. I don't really see why that that would be any issues. Um, certainly it'll be fine. Anyway, so you get your amateur shunt here and you have your main power connects to one side. And then from that to the other side, you have the three wires I was talking about. One goes down to your starter solenoid right here. And from your starter solenoid, you have your, your ground switch here. It's not tightened yet. Um, your ground switch here will be your master switch to ground, and then that completes the circuit. And then your your main power goes in there to power, for me, a VPX or a main bus to, with all the breakers. Um, another one of the wires that comes off of here is your ECU backup switch. And that gets its own 30 amp fuse um, that is wired back into here, ready ready for its ready for its switch, and then it'll come back through to the X1 connector, which isn't in here yet, right here on the fuse box. Um, and the third connector here will also go from the X1 or X3 connector, and the X3 connector um, is it pin three? Yes, pin three will go to here and that will be generator B's power supply for the airframe. And so you can kind of st start to see like the overview of the system with generator B, how it links in and it's gonna provide power back to the system and it can power back to the battery, everything. Um, generator A kind of just does its own thing and it basically only lives right here on regulator A that powers the ECU and the engine um, only. So I don't think that there will ever be an uh, instance where generator A is running your avionics. I could be wrong. Um, if generator B were to go out, then generator A would. I, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's only vice versa. If generator A fails, um, generator B will take it over for it. Um, so then of course the third switch on your, your X3 connector down there is um, to supply power to um, the EMS, the fuse box, the, the EMS as a whole, uh, during startup. And so there's the three connectors that go to your startup and pretty much you just use relays essentially. So you have one key turn and that turn, that key operates three relays, um, one to ground. Here's my ground wire. It grounds your, um, regulator A because you're powering air, um, battery power to your fuse box to your EMS you need to ground it to the to the airframe and it does the HIC B connector to start your engine and of course it powers the box like I said so then you get to the ground system and I was originally going to put my GPS here but I found that uh, drilling out one of these holes was a better option um, it'll allow me to make one ground terminal for the whole system um, the battery lug, of course, it's not connected because we don't want to be using that right now. And the engine ground, which is here, as well as the avionics ground. So the avionics ground wire goes through here into there. And the whole system should be simple and robust from there. So hopefully that makes some sense and helps somebody out a little bit.